I've been watching it on television, and frankly, Edward, now that the news conference is over, I am relieved. Oh, I agree, Lila. It was a pretty harrowing experience. But thank the good Lord, Scorpio really didn't say anything embarrassing. I thought he handled it very well. You know, some of those newsmen didn't. I know why they call them news hounds. They're like hungry dogs. Yes, I saw. Yeah. I guess we're just going to have to face the fact we will always be a target here in Port Charles. My dear, people of prominence usually are, but that's not what worries me. No? What does? Crane Tolliver was a vindictive man, Edward, and I don't think he, ch he changed, even at the end. And I keep wondering whether he passed on those documents to someone else just to keep the threat alive. Yeah, I know. That concerns me, too, more than anything else. Do you suppose he gave them to Jimmy Lee? I don't know. I've thought about that, you know, and I seriously doubt it. After all, Scorpio did question him right here at the party, and he denied it. However, one fact remains, Edward. We are still not legally married. Ah, mere technicality. Yes, but it's, uh, uh it, it must be corrected, dear, and the sooner the better. <laughs> corrected? How? Well, isn't it obvious you and I must get married? Oh, Lila, now what's that going to accomplish? I mean, Cousin Herbert could still make our lives pure hell if he ever found out the truth. Marriage at this late date isn't going to keep that jackal at bay. No, Edward, I've given this matter some serious thought. And I insist we have to be married. We have to, uh, we must be married. Oh, Lila. Good. Do you realize what that would accomplish? What we'd have to go through? We'd have to get a marriage license. Uh, uh, go through blood tests, three-day waiting period. Why, holy Moses, we'd be the laughing stock of this whole town. Well, I don't mind the inconvenience, dear, and I'm sure you can find somebody who'll do it in a hurry, can't you? Well, I suppose I could, you know, call Wharton. He's always pretty good at cutting corners. Then you'll call him. I have your promise. Mm, very well, Lila, if you're that much afraid of Cousin Herbert. Cousin Herbert has nothing to do with it. I want this marriage for myself. It's all right, as long as it's all right. Now, are you going to tell me what the matter is? You turned as white as a ghost when Scorpio came in here. I did not. Well, maybe not when he came in, but as soon as you found out who he was. You dreaming. I don't think so. Well, look, I don't like cops. A lot of people don't. You've got to have a reason. Not what I'm going to give you. Come on. Come on, Lulu. I'm just trying to help you. Well, I didn't ask for it. And the name is Lou, not Lulu. Okay, excuse me. Lou. Listen, if you're in trouble, you gotta tell somebody. I mean, you can't go it alone. I can take care of myself. I don't need anybody. Neither you or Parrish or anybody. But how come you hang around here so much? You want me to go? I didn't say that. Hey, look, I'll leave if that's what you want. Come on, I didn't say that. Besides, where are you gonna go? Someplace. Blackie says you got no place to go. Yeah, what else did Blackie say? That somebody is after you. Oh, you must have a really good imagination because I've got nobody after me. Where do your parents live? None of your business. You're a runaway, aren't you? Did he tell you that? He didn't have to. It's written all over your face. To be a runaway, you gotta be running, right? Well, I'm standing still. So I see. Hey, quit looking at me like that. Like what? Like you got me all figured out. No, no, I don't have you figured out. You see, I can't figure out why anybody would turn down all the hell the people around here are trying to give you. And Blackie doesn't want anything from you. All he's trying to do is help you because he likes you and he's your friend. Okay, well, let me tell you something. Where I come from, People don't give away things for free. They want something in return. Well, don't judge the whole world by that. For a long time, that was my world. Yeah. Well, now this is. 
So why don't you just try trusting a little bit? Who knows? You might like it. I gotta get some air. You coming back? Yeah, I'll be back. Quartermain residence. Hello? Hello? Who is it? Uh, I suppose you don't want anything to eat. Yeah. How was your lunch with Holly? I just left her, and darling, it was so much fun. We did everything but sing the old school song. Yeah, well, I'm glad. Yes, and we cooked up a surprise. Guess what? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Not when the two of you put your heads together. The Scorpios are having a housewarming tomorrow night, a cocktail party. Uh, tomorrow night? Yes. And it's going to be so much fun. I know it. We have the caterer set and the florist, and Holly is just as excited as I am. Celia, we can't go. Well, of course we can go. It was my idea. I'm sorry. Sorry will hardly do, Grant. I mean, why on earth can't we go? Because we're committed to dinner tomorrow night at the Hardys, remember? With that all, well, that's no problem. We'll just get the Hardys to reschedule the dinner. Celia, hmm? Steve Hardy is chief of staff. You don't treat him that way. You should have given more notice. Darling, the man will surely understand. I mean, chief of staff or not, he would understand that tomorrow night is going to be quite a gala event. I have a patient to see. But just remember, we've accepted the Hardy's invitation and we'll be there. I'll see you later. Phone. Yes, this is Celia Quartermain. I'm in the cafeteria. Is Mrs. Hardy in the hospital? Yes, I'll hold. away from something. I know your work here is very important. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I was really hoping for an excuse to get away from my desk. You know, I love that dress. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and I hope you wear those colors often. They're just perfect for you. Well, well thank you. They are two of my favorites. <laughs> you know, I hope that someday when you have time, we can go on a shopping spree. I don't know my way around Port Charles quite well yet. Well, I'd love to. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a first class tour. Oh. So tell me, do you like Port Charles? Oh, so I, far at least. Yes, I just love it. Oh, good. I, it's beautiful, of course, but what really delights me are the people. I mean, everyone is so friendly, and they, they make me feel real like I'm at home. Mm, well, we're so pleased when someone like you comes to town. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And you know another thing? Every, there's just so much happening here. I found myself jumping right into the spirit of it today. Oh, really? In what way? Well, just today, I was planning a spur-of-the-moment cocktail party for tomorrow night. I was having lunch with Holly. It's going to be at her place. We've just about got all the details set, <clears throat> even the caterers. You're having caterers? It must be a very big party, then. Yes, yes, it will be. Uh -huh. Oh, and naturally, you and Dr. Hardy will be invited. Oh, Celia, well, ordinarily, we'd love to come, but uh, tomorrow night, we're having a small dinner party our ourselves. Didn't Grant tell you? Tell me what? Well, about having dinner at our place tomorrow night. You two are our guests. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. I have never been so embarrassed in my life. 
If Grant did tell me, I, it's completely slipped my mind. Oh. Well, I'll just have to call Holly and tell her that our party is off. Oh, oh now, now, wait a minute, see. No, no, of course. It's called off. Well, just call the caterers and cancel oh, them. Then, and... Please, there is no need to do that. Oh, but of course there is. Now, if now, we accepted an invitation at your house for dinner, that settles it. Now, wait a minute. In the first place, you and Grant are our only guests, so we can certainly postpone our dinner to another night. And but... after all, if you've ordered the caterers and the florist, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to cancel them at the last minute. Well, I still feel just terrible about this. Oh, now, please, don't think... Don't think about it for another second. After all, we can have dinner at our place another time. And as for tomorrow night... Well, Steve and I would be delighted to come to your party at Robert and Holly's. You're sure Dr. Hardy won't be upset? Of course not. I want you to know this really teaches me a lesson. I get these ideas, and I get so excited <laughs> that I don't stop to think. <laughs> Well, I think that's one of the reasons that we're so pleased you're here in this town. I mean, you have such vitality and such wonderful spontaneity. <laughs> Believe me, you are just the kind of a tonic that Port Charles needs. I hope you mean that. Of course I do. And we'll be delighted to be at your party tomorrow night. You are so understanding, Audrey. Oh, Thank come you. Come on, think nothing of it. I mean, we're just so pleased that you're here. <laughs> the Quartermain residence? It is. Uh, who did you wish to see? Uh, I believe I'm expected. I'm Judge Simpson. Well, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't told to expect anyone. Uh, what person did you want to see? The bride and groom. I beg your pardon? I'm here to perform the marriage service. The marriage service here? Mm -hmm. What is it, Stella? Well, this man says he's here to perform a wedding. Oh, yes, I know. Won't you come in? Thank you, Stella. Uh, I am Edward Quartermain. Judge Porter Simpson, Mr. Quartermain. I don't believe we've met. But I certainly know you by reputation. This is a great pleasure. Well, thank you. That uh, it was good of you to come on such short notice. Uh, may I take your coat? Oh, sure. Our, uh, our mutual friend, Mr. Wharton, reached me in chambers. He explained that it was a matter of some urgency. He asked me to bring all the necessary papers with me. Hmm. Well, that was kind of you. Oh, not at all. It's simply a matter of cutting through red tape. Did you have any problems? No, I'm just glad to be helpful. I'm sure you can appreciate presiding at trials can often be rather tedious, and uh, hearing some cases, I get a very jaded view of human nature. Yes, I'm sure you do. But for presiding at a wedding, that, uh, that restores my faith, you might say. There's a great personal satisfaction involved. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can imagine. Well, shall we get on with it? By all means. The guests are assembled, I assume? Uh, well, no, not exactly. You see, this is uh, going to be a very small ceremony, uh, quite private. I see. In fact, uh, there are no guests at all. Uh, Stella here will act as our witness, and then there'll be my son and his wife. I will? You will. Uh, well, that uh, satisfies all the requirements. Mm -hmm. Now, if the bride is available... Yeah. I am the bride, Your Honor. Uh, yes, Lila Quartermain. That's right. Edward, you, you are the groom? That's right. Good. Well, as soon as uh, we're all here, let's begin. <laughs> She is really like a breath of fresh spring air. <laughs> Do you know why I happen to agree with you? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd hoped you'd still be here. My patient took less time than I expected. Oh, I'm glad I stayed, too. Audrey and I have been having the nicest little visit. <laughs> yes, she was just telling me. You know, we both owe her our thanks. She was so very understanding about tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night? Well, Celia was just telling me about the party she's giving tomorrow night, and Steve and I will be so pleased to be there. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. I thought you'd invited us for dinner tomorrow night. Well, all that's been changed. I'll explain later. You yes. know, you're a very lucky man, Grant. Oh. Uh, Celia, I think, is a marvelous party planner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to my desk. Certainly. See you later. Okay, Celia, what is going on? Really quite simple, Grant. 
Audrey has simply postponed our dinner plans for tomorrow night. Yes, obviously. But what was all that about your planning a party? Well, I told you the Scorpios are having a housewarming tomorrow night, a cocktail party. I know what you told me, but if the party's at their house, aren't they giving it? Well, of course they are. <sighs> then I'm still confused. Grant, I said it was simple. Mm. Now, Audrey and I were having a conversation, and I simply mentioned the party I'm giving tomorrow night at Holly. Oh, wait a minute, the party you're giving? Well... But you just said Holly was giving the party. Well, she is, of course. The telling Audrey that I was responsible was just a little white lie. Yeah, just a minute, now, Celia. Now, don't be so cross, darling. All I did was to arrange it so that we could go to the Scorpio's party tomorrow night and still have dinner with the Hardys at a later date. Mm. Now, Audrey understood perfectly. <laughs> You're not cross, are you? Oh, with you? Well, I don't think I ever could be. You're my little conniver. I hope you mean that as a compliment. Oh, I do. At least you get your own way, but then you always did. And you know something? Hmm. That's the one reason you love me. Oh, Robert, I'm glad you had the press conference go. Oh, it's over. Uh, did you watch it on TV? No, I wanted to, but I was out. I had lunch with Celia. Was it really rough? I swear the local press corps have to be descended from vultures. However, I got through it. How was lunch? It was fun. We talked about school for hours and we finally caught up on everything. I think we're back on the same wavelength we always were. Celia is indeed quite a girl. She is. I've forgotten how enthusiastic she can be about everything. Oh, that reminds me. We talked about uh, throwing a party. Oh, housewoman. Oh, who's housewoman? Ours. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea. Uh, when were you thinking of uh, giving it? Uh, tomorrow, actually. Holly, isn't this a little sudden? Well, that's what I thought at first, but as Celia said, it's those last-minute parties that always work out the best. Okay, well, what are we talking about here? A few friends? Well, perhaps a few more. You've got to get all this done by tomorrow night. Now, that's, that's a lot of work. Can you do it? Are you kidding? You haven't seen Celia once she gets going. I mean, we were right in the restaurant. She's calling the caterer and the florist. Are you sure you don't mind? No, not at all. Hell, that's a great idea. It's about time we had a bit of fun around here. Yes, it's great. Who, uh, who are you asking? Well, that is my department. All you have to do tomorrow night is open the door, be surprised, and have a ball. <laughs> Edward, wilt thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Wilt thou love her, honor her, comfort and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto her, so long as ye both shall live? Say, I will. Oh, uh, yes, I will. Lila, wilt thou have this man to thy wedded husband? To live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? And wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him, so long as ye both shall live. I will. The ring. Hmm? Oh. Mm. By the power vested in me by the state of New York, I now pronounce that you are man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh. <laughs> well done. Well done. Oh, Grant. Celia, please, come in. What's going on? They're getting married? Uh, family tradition, Celia. We uh, reaffirm our vows every 20 years. What a beautiful idea. Let's have a toast. <laughs> Well, thank you. That was just...